Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Mark chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. The Reverend Brian Heller is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Mark chapter 7. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre, went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, and the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. His ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So a few moments ago, we prayed, O Lord, open my lips. And how often do we pause and consider what this means for the Lord to truly open our lips? In our reading this morning from St. Mark, Christ opens the lips of a mute man. And when Christ does this, our English translation says that the man began to speak plainly, but the actual Greek word that is used is the word orthos. Now, if that sounds familiar, it should. It's where we get orthopedic, orthodontist. And it doesn't mean just simply saying something plainly, but doing it straightly, or perhaps even better, rightly. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ this morning, what does it mean for us to speak rightly within our own lives? How have we used those lips that the Lord has opened. Have we used them to speak well of our neighbor, explaining everything in the kindest way to one another? Or have we used our lips a little less piously? Have we used them to slander another's reputation? Have we used our lips to spread lies about others for our own benefit? Have we used our lips angrily when disagreements with others have arose, what have our lips and our tongues been up to? If we are honest with ourselves here this morning, our tongues find it much easier to criticize others than to build one another up. We find it more pleasurable to gossip about our neighbor than to speak well of them and defend them. And it's not just about our tongues. How about our ears? Remember that Jesus also heals the hearing of this man who is deaf, too. What do your ears delight in hearing? Do you rejoice in the hearing of the word of the Lord? Do they come here to chapel this morning, perked up and excited to hear the reading of Holy Scripture? Or do our ears like to be on the receiving end of those unfaithful lips? Do our ears instead delight, hearing the latest gossip, the latest scandal? Do our ears like to hear lies and other perversions of sinful lips? Your brothers and sisters in Christ, the dangers of the tongue and the ear are indeed very real. Yes, St. Mark tells us that Jesus does come, he heals the deaf and mute man. But when we consider ourselves this morning, we realize that we are in need of a much greater healing. We are in need of a Savior. We are deaf, mute, dead sinners in our trespasses and need of salvation. We are in need of someone to bear our sinful speech, our unfaithful ears, to bear every other sinful thought, word, and deed upon himself. And this is exactly what Jesus does. Christ, true God and true man, the one whose lips spoke only the truth of God, dies the death that was meant for you and me 
and his glorious resurrection gives us his victory. Again, consider how Jesus heals the man in our reading. Jesus' actions and his healing, it seems so strange, so unconventional, so uncomfortable. Again, how Jesus heals him. He takes his fingers, he puts them in the man's ears, he spits and touches this man's tongue, speaking the Aramaic phrase, Ephatha, be opened. No, you probably will not find a doctor here in St. Louis that will treat you like this. Yet Jesus and his word, those things that we consider to be normal, ordinary, maybe even mundane, become sacred and blessed. When Jesus goes in to heal this unclean man, he doesn't take any protective safety precautions, he goes all in. And the same is true for us. When Christ comes to destroy sin, he comes right into the muck of it all, born of the Virgin Mary. He is not afraid to touch the untouchable. He is not afraid to love the unlovable. Christ comes, he takes on our flesh. He groans with you, he cries with you, he dies to death meant for you. Today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ comes to you not with high-tech medical equipment, but he comes with water, bread, wine, included with his command and combined with his word to bring you gifts of forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. It is through his word and his holy sacraments that our Lord does indeed open our lips, so that we can confess that Jesus is Lord and call upon his name and be saved. As those redeemed by Christ's holy blood, our lips having been loose to confessing Jesus' name and speaking rightly, our ears open to the hearing of his word, we are called to live new lives in him. No, Jesus does not heal this man in our readings so he can go on sinning in the ways that he couldn't before. Jesus doesn't open the lips of this man so he can go out, tell lies, slander his friends, and blaspheme God. Jesus does not heal the man's ears. So the man can now listen to gossip and other perversions of speech. As Christians, we are tempted to think, as another faithful Lutheran pastor often puts it this way, well, I love to sin, God loves to forgive. What a great deal indeed. No, as St. Paul writes, are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? By no means. Dear friends, we are called daily to live new lives in Christ. Yes, the Lord has indeed opened our lips and our ears to hear and speak rightly. And as we await Christ's second coming, Yes, we will be tempted by the world, the devil, and our own sinful flesh. Yes, we will fall into sin. We will fall short of God's law every single day. But we continue to return to our baptisms. We return to the water with Christ's word, the water that has drowned our sins and brings us forth a new life in Christ. Just as the crowds in our reading simply could not contain themselves, and spoke all the more of what Christ has done for that man out of pure joy. So also we daily rejoice in the salvation that Christ has won for us. That while we are untouchable, unlovable, when we were deaf, mute, dead sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, our prayer this morning, and indeed every morning, continues to be, O Lord, open my lips. For yes, Christ has opened our lips to speak rightly, confess his holy name, and we are assured that Christ has and will continue to do all things well for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about long and short-term opportunities to serve, visit servenow.lcms.org.